Greetings all and welcome to Fairy Tale Friday. I'm Master Storyteller Jonathan Cruck, and behind me here, Maestro Tom McCoy. Together we're going to perform a fairy tale from Ireland. Liam and the Leprechaun. <laughs> Your man Liam woke up feeling lucky. When he jumped out of bed, why, the good luck took hold and put him right into his trousers, socks as well. And after we went out, he found that the day greeted him with sweet sunshine, flowers waving. How are you doing there, Liam? The butterflies landed about him, and why, he ambled down the road and wondered the good luck to really come his way, and oh, it wasn't long before it found him. First, he found a little twinkling, I guess you could call it, round and about his nose when a sweet smell there went, and t'was a bit of smoke emanating from a pipe of one of the wee folk, the good people, the fine neighbors. Was a leprechaun. Liam peered over a stone wall and detected the tip tip tapping, the tap tap tipping of a little fellow's little hammer. The fellow was deep into his work. He wore a red cap and a green coat and a little stump of a pipe in his mouth as he tipped and tapped away. Liam recalled tales told of leprechauns by his grandfather. And well did he know, if he could catch and keep the little fellow, it would be bound, obliged, to bring him to his pot of gold. Liam held his breath and peered over the stone wall at the little fellow. And then, whoop blip, he jumps, grabs hold of the little fellow, and oh, the feather wiggled and squiggled and squiggled and wiggled as if he was a pig covered in butter. Wee, 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 cries the little fellow, and at length Liam held him upside down by his ankle, and the fellow spun round like a top. Why, it made Liam dizzy to watch. And then the little fellow says, Upright me, upright me, Liam. And Liam set him straight, and the leprechaun says, Liam, long I've watched you. I knew your grandfather and your great-grandfather. Oh, and well did they tell me about you, leprechaun. Now you're obliged to bring me right to your pot of gold. I don't want any shenanigans from you. Come, come, show me what it is. Oh, is that all you're going to be? All business. Why don't you want to stop and have a cup of tea? I could tell you grand stories about the mischief your grandfather and great-grandfather used to get into. Oh, there was a time when they were fooling around with that girl, and another time when they were... Oh, I don't want to hear about any foolery. I don't want any foolery from you. Come, come. Bring me to the gold. All right. We'll go right to the gold. But listen, Liam. If you were to take your own inspiration, it could lead you to your own gold. Put that into your pipe and smoke it. Oh, you don't even have a pipe. Well, come along, and I'll stop piping. And Liam marched right behind the little leprechaun, the little fellow's little red hat, kind of bobbing about among the shamrocks. But after a time, the leprechaun falls into a swoon. Oh, Liam, Liam, we little people can see things that you can't. And right now, your barn is on fire. Your cow's about to get cooked. Well, Liam turned, but just for a moment, he then turned back. Ah, you little trickster. I haven't got a baron, nor a cow. Well, that's because they all burned down. <laughs> oh, just play and just, just have a little bit of a jape with you there. All right, we'll get on with it. And on they wandered. Till again the leprechaun fell. Liam, Liam, I can see it now. Oh, I shouldn't have done it before because this time it's true. I see a fine fellow who's fast on the fingers and playing the piano. And instead of playing the piano, he's tried to tickle your girlfriend, Liam. Oh, that would be Tom McCoy. I'll give him one of these and would oh no no no. Tisn't Tom at all. 
It's you, Leprechaun, trying to trick me out of the gold. Well, I haven't tricked you. It's right here. What? Right here in the middle of the field? Well, I don't leave it out in the open. You got to dig down. Just some three feet. But I'll tell you, and even I'll do this. I'll mark it for you. And the little fellow took off his hat and put that hat right on the ground. That's where the gold is. I'm obliged to tell you the truth. It's here forsooth. Just go get yourself a shovel. Come back. Dig it up. And Liam, he looked at the little hat. He looked to give the leprechaun thanks, but the fella had vanished. Faster than you can, Baroop, he was gone. Think a thought. Liam went back, found his shovel, and returned to that spot in the field. Began to dig down deep. Three feet deep, says he. But when Liam threw a shovel full of dirt far over his shoulder, a bit of red caught his eye. And something more, something worse. There, he spied another hat. And when he looked above that hat, there was another. And there was another, and there was another, and there was another, and there was another, and another, and another, and another, and Why, there's hats from here to kingdom come, and back again. Why, I could spend the rest of my life digging under these hats, and still wouldn't hope to find the gold. Ugh, he brought me to the spot, but... Now he's lost it on me. Ah! That little fella, fie upon him. But ah then, that little bit of a curse turned to a blessing when Liam thought upon this, something the leprechaun had told him. Liam, if you worked as hard with a bit of inspiration, you'll find your own goal. Exactly what Liam did. He found a bit of inspiration, whether it was to tell a tale or play music. I know not what it was, but I do know he earned himself enough gold to leave Ireland and come to live here in these United States. His estate, it's right up the road from where you're now sitting. Go see it. Knock upon the door and tell them Master Storyteller Jonathan Crook and Maestro Tom McCoy send you to visit with Liam, who lost the leprechaun, but found his gold. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again.